Let's talk. We have to oh, move on. Okay, Rwanda great. scheme again. Oh, uh, James cleverly after the after the. Uh, less than successful initiative by the government yesterday to say their uh, war on the migrant crisis was really working. No, it's not. Uh, he's never going to stop the boats. James Cleverly extraordinarily uh, claimed that the Rwanda scheme was working as a deterrent to stop people coming to Britain. Uh, James, the Rwanda scheme hasn't started. What the hell is this First about? First of all, do they think that migrants sitting in Cali or traipsing across Europe with the view of getting to the UK are there sort of with their BBC apps listening to the Today programme going, oh, well, listen, James Cleverly just said something on uh, Radio 4 that well, I might not go anymore. I no. might just change my mind, do a U-turn and go back to whence I came. No. And secondly, no one's even gone through Rwanda. We all know that. If they're going to read any headline whatsoever, they're going to say, well, you know, turns out all the things the government has they might do if we get there, we're just going to be given right to remain because 67% of people who try their luck seem to get that according exactly. to Exactly. The There's no figures. deterrent whatsoever. Just encouragements, enticements. Let's have a listen to the Home Secretary, James Cleverly, speaking to Sky News yesterday about the extraordinary success of the Rwanda scheme. And the Rwanda plan is part of that deterrent. No, no one deterrent? element... Well, it will deter. And we know it's already having an element of deterrent, even before it's fully know. up and running, because we interview people when they arrive, when they uh, um, uh, put forward applications for asylum, and they tell us that other people that, they that were planning to come to the UK have chosen not to because of the deterrent effect of Rwanda, and that's before it's that's even fully up and running. It's not apocryphal. It is the interviews, it is what people tell us when we interview them. That's apocryphal, that's apocryphal. And also, what a load of rubbish, absolute rubbish. Why would you be deterred by the Rwanda scheme when the Rwanda scheme doesn't exist? Well, why aren't you just saying when people arrive in the country, can I see your passport? Can you prove that you have a right to be here? Oh, no, why don't you go back? Why are you sitting, yeah. sitting them down, giving them a shortbread and a cup of tea and conducting an interview? Yeah, and What's here, that about? Here, here's a, a tremendous deterrent. If you come to this country illegally and claim asylum, you've got a 67% chance of staying here. That's not an uh, a deterrent. That is an enticement. That is ridiculous. Uh, we are still with James uh, Cleverly. Good old James now, Cleverly. Uh, we're going to have to uh, negotiate this little item carefully. I think you'll uh, understand mm -hmm. as we continue. Uh, in fact, shall we have a little listen Let's first? Just have a this listen. is Michelle, Michelle Hussain uh, grilling James Cleverly on Radio 4 yesterday. You saying things, there have been a number of times now um, recently when things you have said have, have got you into trouble. There was the, uh, the, there was the time it was reported that you had called a government policy bat <laughs> There was the personal place you referred to in Parliament as a <laughs> hole. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Place, you did say, didn't you, that no. it was a place? No, no, I absolutely didn't. You didn't use the word <laughs> hole in Parliament? No, I didn't. So when you picked up on a microphone, who was talking? So, who no, said I the didn't. word in no, Parliament? No, no, no. I, you, you need to do better research because I've made it very, very clear. Ooh, ooh I think he used naughty words. That mi Michelle Hussain, hell of a journalist, onto a big story there. A grown man used the word, and I'm not going to say it, beep. You know what I mean. But, you know, <laughs> as you were saying, I get the impression, just like you, that she just loved saying that word as many times yeah. as possible in a sort of childish manner. She just yes, wanted to yes. be the person doing the whole sort of Jeremy Hunt uh, misnomer on air. Um, and it, it's grow up. You didn't even have to keep saying it and having it bleed out. She said it out. seven times in a minute. Seven she clearly times. enjoyed it. It's like, uh, oh, Mr. Cleverly, you can't say that word, but I can. And I'm going to say it seven times in a minute on uh, the BBC. BBC. Isn't that wonderful? Um, if she thinks this is a good story. And the BBC gets so worked up about people swearing in inappropriate It's like they have to say... They're you know grown-ups. People swear. You know when you drive with speed limits and you do this thing where you get up to a traffic light and you know it's a 20-mile-per-hour zone, you're on red, and so for reasons only known to yourself for that little moment of pleasure, you accelerate as much as you can up until the 20-mile-per-hour yeah. point just to give you that little hit of joy yeah. because... Life is pretty much joyless. Um, <laughs> and I get the impression that year, working at the BBC is much the same. So yeah. trying to get a swear word out, there is some sort of ecstatic release. What I don't understand is why Michelle Hussein insists on pronouncing any word related to the Middle East in a strange Arabic voice. Dollabon. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they, that goes back to Angela Rippon, who used to got gorillas, as in the war, war style gorillas, who say, gorillas. Uh, that was the beginning it, of the BBC British presenters trying to. Uh, use foreign words uh, authentically, they would say. Yes. I would Absurdly, I'd say. 